IELTS Listening Lesson 2. This is the last video lesson for listening on this course. There are only two lessons because I don't think teachers can help you with listening so much. I've given you some tips and in this lesson I'm going to give you some examples and some suggestions for further practice. And that's all I think a teacher can do. After that you need to do lots of practice alone. Let's start the lesson now with some examples. Example questions for the four sections of the IELTS listening test. Section 1 will definitely contain a gap fill exercise where you have to fill in some basic information about what the speaker is saying. Let's look at an example. You see joining the local library at the top of the page and there will be some questions and some gaps like this. You can see name, mark, and then question one, address, question two, etc. I'm going to read the transcript for this exercise and you can try and fill in the gaps. In these gaps, let's say you're allowed to use one word and or a number only. So you can use a word or a number or a word and a number. Here's the recording. Listen now. My full name is Mark Braithwaite. That's B-R-A-I-T-H-W-A-I-T-E. Braithwaite. I live at number 18 Hill Street, Newtown. I'm joining the library because I'm about to start a postgraduate degree and I need access to books about the local area. That's the end of the transcript. Let's have a look at the answers. It was number one, Mark Braithwaite. Check your spelling. Number two, 18 Hill. Remember, we're allowed a number and a word. Number three, postgraduate. Check your spelling. Spelling is very important. If you make a spelling mistake, unfortunately, it will be marked wrong. Now let's move on to section two. In this section, you could have a gap fill a multiple choice or a matching exercise. Let's look at another gap fill, but this time it's a gap fill in a diagram. And this is more difficult for many people because when you see the diagram like this, you're not sure where to look. It's not as easy as a normal list of questions. However, the technique is you should follow the numbers, the question numbers. Questions in the listening test always go in order, so we know that these the recording will start with question 11, you'll hear that first, and then you'll hear the answer to number 12, and then number 13. So follow the numbers of the questions around the diagram. That's the order that the speaker will describe the diagram in. Let's listen now, I'm going to read the transcript and you'll hear the answers, put them in the gaps. In this case, you can only use one word in each gap. The school is located in the centre of town, not far from the shopping area and several prominent buildings. If you leave the school building and walk along the main high street, you'll see the cinema on the left, just after the crossroads. Further along the high street, the road bends to the right, just after Woods Lane, and becomes East Avenue. And Town Hall Square is the large open area at the end of this street. That's the end of the transcript, and here are the answers. Number 11 was the cinema, it was on the left just after the crossroads. Number 12 was East Avenue, after Woods Lane, the other road that isn't marked on the right was called Woods Lane, and the Town Hall Square was at the end of East Avenue. Don't worry about the capital letters at the beginning of the words East and Square, it's completely fine to write east and square without the capital. There is no rule about this uh, in the IELTS test. They don't care at all about capital letters, small letters, uppercase, lowercase. You can write your answers any way you want, but the spelling must be co correct. So square needs to be spelled correctly, for example. Let's move on to another exercise from section two, this time a matching exercise. Here's the exercise. It says, when can visitors see each show? 
write the correct letter A, B or C next to questions 18 to 20. A, B and C, you've got the three choices all year round, during all school holidays, once a year. And then you've got questions 18 to 20, the names of three shows. And these will go in order again, 18, 19, 20. You'll hear the three shows in the correct order. Um, I'm going to read it now and you listen and put the correct letter at the end in these spaces next to the questions. We put on three main shows for children, but parents should make sure that they book well in advance to avoid disappointment. Our children's shows are very popular. Tickets for Magic on Ice sell out very quickly because this is our Christmas show and it only runs for two weeks during the Christmas holiday. If you're looking for something to do with your children at the weekend, I would recommend a visit to our farm to see Animal Fun and Games. This show is open on Saturdays and Sundays during both term time and school holidays. Finally, Rides and Slides is closed during the school term but open when children are off school. That's the end of the recording. Hopefully you got the answers. Let's see what they are. Magic on Ice was C, once a year, because it said two weeks during the Christmas holiday only. Then 19, Animal Fun and Games was A, all year round, because it said it's open on weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, during both term time and school holidays. And Rides and Slides was B, during all school holidays only, but not during term time. It said, open when children are off school, but closed during the school term. So those were two typical exercises from section two. Now let's move on to section three, and you could get a gap fill or a multiple choice in this section. Let's look at a multiple choice question now. This is where it starts to become difficult because you have a lot to read. Look at this example. Lots of information to read, so it's very important to read all of that during the break before the recording starts. And my tip that I gave in lesson one, underline keywords during that break time. Let's underline some words and read the question together. So the question, the subjects in Roger's study were chosen because. So subjects chosen because, those are the keywords. Then A. They had all volunteered to participate in other studies in the past. Volunteered studies in the past. B. Each of them had achieved excellent results in various physical tests. Excellent results, physical tests. And C. They were all of a similar age, similar age. So now we've got a, just a few words underlined and that can focus your attention more while you're listening to the recording. Let's listen now. I'll read the recording. So Roger's speaking. The process of selecting people for the study involved various stages. First, our preference was to use people who had previously put themselves forward for similar studies carried out by members of our department. We chose a small number of participants from the department database, but unfortunately there were not enough people who met our requirements. So, our second step was to find some new volunteers. Next, we needed to select the 10 most suitable participants from our volunteer group. We put all of them through a series of exercises to measure their strength, stamina and balance. We had expected the younger volunteers to achieve the best results in these tests, but we were surprised by the performances of some of our older volunteers. In the end, we chose the 10 highest scoring volunteers to be our study subjects and we were pleased to have a wide range of ages in the group. That's the end of the recording and let's look at the answer. It was B. The reason was, instead of excellent results and physical tests, we had some different words, but we had measure strength, stamina and balance. That's the physical tests and highest scoring instead of excellent results. In section three and four, you can expect this kind of thing. The words that you've underlined, you should listen for, but be ready for synonyms or similar words with the same meaning. If you got the wrong answer for this exercise, don't worry. You can check very carefully by downloading 
the worksheet that I've attached where you'll see the transcript and you can look at all the words and see where you went wrong. So remember to download the attached sheet below this video and check the transcripts carefully. Now let's move on to section 4 where you could have a gap fill or a multiple choice again. This time we're going to look at another gap fill and this will be a more difficult one than the section 1 or 2 gap fills that we've seen. Let's compare the section 1 gap fill topic which was joining the local library, a very general topic. Compare that with the section 4 topic we're going to see which is understanding leadership. Somebody lecturing, giving a speech about this idea of understanding leadership is a much more academic topic. Here are the questions and it's going to be one word in each gap in this gap fill. So the first one, successful leaders are able to see an overall something of what is happening. Let's underline the key words. Successful leaders see an overall. And I've highlighted the word an because that tells you it's going to be a noun. An overall something of what is happening. Question 32. They have the confidence to something responsibilities to other people. And I'll underline confidence to. It's going to be a verb after that. So I've highlighted the word to as well. To something responsibilities. Okay, so now I'll read the transcript of this recording and see if you can put the two correct words in those gaps. The article entitled Understanding Leadership came out of a collaboration between the university's business school and our contacts in several successful medium-sized companies in the city. The initial finding that stood out when we looked at the practices of the most consistent achievers was that these people have a very clear idea of the direction of their businesses. They see the big picture of what is going on within their companies, in their particular markets and in the wider world. They also tend to be particularly good at motivating and empowering those around them. The best leaders understand implicitly the need to trust their staff and they are happy to delegate tasks and duties to others. Let's look at the answers then. 31 was picture. They're able to see an overall picture of what's happening. And 32 was delegate. They have the confidence to delegate responsibilities. The key words that helped us to get those answers, you can see better on the worksheet if you look at the transcript. But just quickly, for 31 it was see the big picture of what is going on. So instead of the word overall, you've got big. Instead of what is happening, what is going on. And for 32, happy to delegate tasks and duties. Instead of confidence to, they're happy to. And responsibilities, you've got tasks and duties. So again, similar words, not necessarily the same words that you see in the questions. And this is what makes section 3 and 4 particularly difficult because we have a lot of this. Okay, so we've seen example questions from the four sections of IELTS listening. And now, as I said at the beginning, it's your job to do lots of practice. So where can you get listening practice from? Well, I think you should start with the official IELTS books. You'll find these come from Cambridge and they look like this or like this. And there's also one that looks like this, the official IELTS practice materials. There are 11 up to now, there'll be more in future, 11 of the Cambridge IELTS books. And there are two of these official IELTS practice materials. That should give you plenty of listening practice to get on with. Of course, it's also a good idea to do other types of general listening. But if you want exam practice, these are the only books that you can really trust you can also trust the official IELTS website, IELTS.org. There are some example listening questions on there that you can practice. And I'll link to them in the worksheet that I've attached below this lesson. So remember to download the attached sheet. You'll see the transcripts of everything that we've done in this lesson. And also my tips on where to find those uh, further practice sources.
That's the end of the two listening lessons on this course. I hope you found them useful. Remember, the main tip for listening is do lots of practice. That's the best way to improve your ear and your exam technique.